the idea that this strong economic data is going to prevent the Fed from recognizing that the inflation threat has subsided and it's going to result in the Fed making a mistake and raising rates too much or leaving them too high too long and causing this unnecessary recession. And stocks are getting hurt for a couple of reasons based on that. One, of course, the higher interest rates are automatically a negative for stock market prices because of the impact on valuations, because the higher the rate is, the lower the discounted present value of future earnings, which is what stocks represent. But also, if the Fed causes this unnecessary recession, that will depress earnings. And so stocks have a lower value when they have lower earnings. And of course, corporations have a lot of debt. And so higher interest rates directly subtract from earnings by running up the interest expense. So all of this is scaring the stock market. But of course, the reality is we're already in recession and we don't have a strong economy. Yes, every once in a while, we're going to get some data that comes out stronger than expected. But most of the data is weaker than expected. And even the data that is stronger than expected, all of the strength is superficial. Look beneath the surface and the reality is weakness. But the same thing is true with respect to the U.S. economy or the labor markets. Don't accept the numbers at face value. Dig a little deeper and look at what's actually happening. Because if you do that with the jobs numbers, the jobs market isn't strong. The jobs market is weak. And the risk that everybody is worrying about is once again the wrong risk. It's not that the Fed is going to raise rates too much. It's that they're not going to raise them enough. It's that they're going to pivot too quickly. It's not that the Fed is going to mistakenly believe that the economy is strong and then to overestimate how high inflation will be. It's the weak economy that's going to cause inflation to be higher because as the economy weakens, production will decline but money printing will expand. In fact, at some point, the Fed will pivot in response to a much weaker economy than it expected. And that's when the dollar is really going to tank. And that's when consumer prices are really going to take off. The inflation that we're experiencing now is going to kick into a much higher gear during the next economic downturn. That's what nobody understands. Everybody just assumes that when the economy weakens, so too will inflation. No, the weakening economy is going to strengthen inflation because inflation is the expansion of the money supply. And the weaker the economy gets, the more the Fed is going to expand the money supply to try to stimulate it. And as the return of quantitative easing causes a mass exodus out of the U.S. dollar, from foreign central banks and private holders, then the falling dollar is going to push consumer prices up dramatically, also increasing the size of our trade deficits and our current account deficits, creating a self-perpetuating spiral of inflation and economic weakness. But we still see a lot of strength in the gold stocks, and I expect that to continue. Remember, if we get a year-end rally in gold stocks, the big difference between a gold stock rally and a regular stock rally is that the gold stock rally is for real. This is a bull market. This is not a head fake. This is not a sucker rally. This is not short covering. This is new longs coming into the market. This, I believe, is a massive bull market that is just in its infancy. And at the same time, gold is in a new bull market. The U.S. dollar is in a new bear market. And by the way, there's a lot of people out there that are talking about Bitcoin building a floor at 1700 because Bitcoin has been trading at around 1700 And even though the Nasdaq has dropped quite a bit over the last couple of days, Bitcoin has kind of traded sideways. And that's caused a lot of people to claim, aha, we found support. This is a bottom. Remember, this is the way Bitcoin has been falling pretty much the entirety of the bear market ever since it was just under 70,000. Bitcoin makes a move down 
and then it consolidates those losses before it takes another move down. But every time it consolidates its losses, people are saying it's forming a bottom. It's not. It's building a trap door, and then the market falls through it. This is a staircase down. And every time Bitcoin stops falling, it's simply resting on a landing, getting ready for the next leg lower, which is what's about to happen. It's interesting that we haven't really had a major one day meltdown in Bitcoin. We've had a lot of those big crashes in the past. Most of those big crashes happened on the way up. And what those declines did is they shook people out, but they gave people an opportunity to buy for the next move to new highs. But we haven't had any of those big, scary declines during this bear market. Why? Because bear markets don't want to shake anybody out. They want to keep everybody in. They want to give people a lot of false hope that the bear market is over. Remember, bear markets slide a slope of hope. And if there were more spectacular one-day crashes, well, the hope might be dashed. But right now, the Bitcoin hodlers are kind of like the frog being boiled slowly in a pot of oil. He doesn't realize he's being boiled, and so he doesn't jump out. But my point is that the $1,700 level for Bitcoin is not a new floor being formed. It's likely the next ceiling being formed. And we're going to have another leg lower. And again, I'm sure that after we drop, maybe this time to around 15000 or so, maybe we'll trade sideways again before the next leg lower. And every time we make another leg lower, you have more people convinced that that low is the bottom and they're looking for Bitcoin to shoot to the moon. In the meantime, it's crashing back down to earth. But the moonshot that they will be missing is the one that's going to take place in real gold and to an even greater extent in silver. If Bitcoiners want a supercharged version of gold, they should be buying silver, not Bitcoin, because I think silver is even better positioned than gold to deliver spectacular returns as the world's population not only exits fiat currencies, but fiat cryptocurrencies as well, including Bitcoin. I tweeted about this and, of course, immediately Bitcoiners are on my Twitter saying that everything I'm saying about a pet rock, I can say about gold, that there's no difference between rocks and gold, that all I could do with gold is use it as a paperweight or a doorstop, which shows you how little Bitcoiners know about actual money, about gold, because gold is far more useful than a rock. Yes, you could use gold as a paperweight, but it would be pretty foolish to use something that valuable to do a job that a rock could do. Because the things that gold could do, like conduct electricity or be used to make jewelry or in medicine or in dentistry or in aerospace, you can't use rocks to do that. Yes, you could use gold as a doorstop, but you can't use a rock to conduct electricity. So gold has far more uses that are far more valuable than the uses of rocks. 